Hey there, Westerosi, and welcome back to Mike Meeple's Painting Poorly Miniature Painting Tutorials for A Song of Ice and Fire the Miniatures Game by Come On Games. Well, the Greyjoys have officially made landfall, and today we're taking a look at the toughest, most battle-hardened commander of the bunch, Victarion. Victarion Greyjoy's sculpt shows off his heavily armored appearance, and I'll be basing my paint job off of the amazing in-game art. This includes utilizing some colors you wouldn't normally associate with armor, such as teal, and adding some rust effects at the end, along with adding a scenic beach-like terrain for the base. I'll be priming Victarion with a Zenithal highlight, and if you'd like to see more specifics on how to do this, make sure you check out my how-to video for that technique. Once that's all dry, it's time to start base coats. We're going to start off by painting the fur at the top of his cloak with German Grey by Vallejo. Once that's completely dry, we'll be adding a dry brush of Neutral Grey by Vallejo. before you apply another dry brush of Blue-Gray Pale by Vallejo. After that, I'm going to be using Asia Magic by the Army Painter from their new Metallic Colors line to paint the scale mail on his shoulders and upper arms. When that's dry, I'll be dry brushing over that with some Necron Compound by Citadel. Next, mix together two parts Prussian Blue by Vallejo and one part Black and use that to paint the cloak. Once you've done that, grab your Azure Magic again and paint Victarion's gorget and helmet. Then use Gunmetal Grey by Vallejo to paint the chainmail on his chest and stomach and his elbows. Now get your German Grey back out and paint Victarion's tunic, pants, and the non-metallic portions of his bracers. After that, I'll be using Emerald by Vallejo to paint the scabbard. Don't worry about getting it on the straps as we're about to paint over that anyway. Once that's done, use some Japanese Uniform by Vallejo to paint the sash across his stomach. Remember, don't be afraid to use multiple coats, just make sure the first is completely dry before you add a second. Then grab some Chocolate Brown by Vallejo to paint his hair, the leather belts around his waist and chest, and his gloves.
Notice I'm not painting the boots or straps on the scabbard, as I'll actually be using Hull Red by Vallejo to do that. You want to paint the handle of the sword and leather wrapping on the axe handle along with the vertical lines down his chainmail. After that, get your gunmetal gray back out and paint the axe handle. Then take some plate mail metal by the army painter and paint the axe blade and head, the trim of the gorget and the pendants on the cloak, all the belt buckles, his bracers, and the hilt and pommel of his sword along with the metal portions of the scabbard. I also took this time to add some plate mail accents to the helmet, around the crest and ridges along the forehead, eyes and chin, though this is completely optional. Once that's dry, I'm using Tainted Gold by the Army Painter to paint the chain at the butt of the axe handle and paint the Kraken detailing on the axe head and the gorget. The Tainted Gold is a much more muted gold, so for something brighter, feel free to use Retributor Armor by Citadel. Next, get your Japanese uniform back out and paint the embroidery on the cloak. Before using your emerald to do the same for the front of the tunic. Once that's all dry, it's time for shades. We're going Highlander style today, and using only one, Nuln Oil by Citadel. Just apply a thin layer of Nuln Oil all over the mini to give it some nice depth and shade. When that's dry, it's time for highlights and finishing touches. I'll be starting off by highlighting the cloak with our same 2 to 1 mix of Prussian blue and black. We're then going to add additional highlights by adding in a drop of emerald to the mix. Before we add another drop and finish up those highlights. Remember that as you paint additional highlights, they should be a smaller area than what you had previously painted, so your brightest highlights should actually be quite small.
Then mix together equal parts flat earth by Vallejo and chocolate brown and use that to highlight the gloves and the belts. You can add another level of highlight to all of that by using pure flat earth. You can also use this to start highlighting the hair. Now use some cork brown by Vallejo to add an additional highlight to the hair. Then use your Japanese uniform to highlight the sash, focusing on the folds that bulge outward and the stitching along the back of the cloak. Now mix together equal parts dark sand by Vallejo and Japanese uniform and add an additional layer of highlight. After that, use your emerald to highlight the stitching going down the front of the tunic. Mix together equal parts whole red and orange brown by Vallejo to highlight the boots, straps on the scabbard, sword handle, and leather wrapping on the axe handle. When that's dry, use pure orange-brown to add another level of highlight. Moving on to the tunic and pants, mix together equal parts German gray and neutral gray and highlight all the portions that billow outward and all the folds in the fabric. before using pure neutral gray to add a second highlight. In order to add some weathering and rust, I'll be stippling on some orange brown where appropriate. This technique involves getting almost all of the paint off of the brush and just lightly dabbing it around a few select areas. I'll be adding brighter rust with some bright orange by Vallejo and using that same technique. Next, I'll paint the rim of the base before using flat earth to paint about half of the base. Why half, you ask? Well, because the other half is going to be covered with Vallejo's dark earth paste. 
Having one side textured and the other side not will lay the groundwork for the beach effect. Once that's dry, dry brush on a little flat earth and dark sand before spraying it with your matte spray. After you've sprayed it with your matte spray and it's had time to dry and cure, go ahead and add any rocks or shrubs that you'd like. To create my water effects, I'll be using Vallejo's Atlantic Blue Water Texture and dabbing it on over the flat portion of the base and a little onto the textured portion of the base as well. Try to keep the height of the water texture equal to the height of the earth texture because it will sink as it dries and water isn't usually above the level of the earth. After a few hours when it's dry, apply a light dry brush to where the water meets the land to create the look of sudsy seawater hitting the beach. And that's it! I want to give a big shout out to all of my patrons whose generous support helped me make quality content like this. And if you're interested in becoming a patron yourself, information on how to do so can be found in the description for this video, along with links to all the supplies I use today and a link to my blog, where you'll find more tutorials for games like A Song of Ice and Fire, the miniatures game. And if you like this video and would like to see more, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, Westerosi.